What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is your review for RuPaul's Drag Race. We are on season 13, episode 6. So, we are back in the workroom after the elimination. And you know they got to talk about what had went down to the untucked. And basically, you know, we're recapping the whole situation. We were there the first time. We don't need to go through the whole thing. But, you know, Candy was like, yes, I was defensive because I thought me and you were cool and you kind of came for me. And, of course, what people say versus what people hear is always an issue because now Candy didn't turn the whole thing around in her head. Like, you know, Tanisha came in there and was like, you are nasty and you are arrogant and I don't like you. And... That's not quite how the whole conversation went. Um, and of course, they kind of went back and forth, back and forth. But when it was all over, said and done, Candy, you proved Tamisha right. Because, you know, Tamisha was like, I feel like you have written off the ladies who were, quote unquote, on the B squad. Like, you've written them off, the pork chop ladies. And Candy says, well, all I'm going to say is that there have been two eliminations and both of them came from that group. So, whatever. And she was like... You just proved my point. You just you just proved my point. So anyway, we move on and um this week's mini challenge. Let me get to my notes, chat. This week's mini challenge challenge, excuse me. Um they had to work in pairs. And Rude told them, be careful who you pick, because whoever you pick to work with in the, in this challenge is going to be your person for the main challenge and because got mick won last week there's an odd number because she won last week she gets to pick which threesome which thruple she's going to join um we already knew who that was going to be we knew it was going to be candy tina burner and got mick we knew that um elliot and tanisha teamed up Simone and La La Rie, Rose Denali, Olivia Utica. Um, and so the mini challenge was they had to, um, they had to, um, create dresses out of this wallpaper and they had to create, um, the dress so that it would stand out because they were going to be standing against the backdrop of the wallpaper. And then one person would be the model and the other person would be like the commentator, like as if it were a runway a runway explaining it. Now, and the guest judge this week was Lonnie Love, which we just saw Lonnie Love like two weeks ago. I'm thinking that because of COVID, they may have been limited in how many different people they could get coming through there that could pass a COVID test and all of the turnaround that they needed. That's the only thing I could think of because I'm like, why are we doubling up on judges like this? And why so close together? Like, she literally was just on, like, two weeks ago. But whatever. But I'm really thinking it's because of COVID. That's just my two cents. Now, um, so, the winners of the mini challenge was Elia and Tanisha Iman. Now, I'm here because I'm just here for Tanisha Iman, and I'm glad that she won. But, honestly, I was, and I really think it was the color commentary that they added because the outfit had like a cheetah print. And so they did this whole thing about um, Carol Baskins. Like the whole thing was about a Carol Baskins original. Da -da 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 and of course it cracked Rue up, you know. Is it me or is Rue laughing way too much this season? Like are these ladies that damn funny or is Rue just in a really good mood and she finds everything funny? Like I don't know. Is it me, y'all? Y'all let me know in the comments. Y'all let me know if it's me or not, okay? Um... But yeah, and so they ended up winning. They won the mini challenge. I honestly, as much as I didn't want to say, as much as I would hate to say it, I honestly thought that Got Mick, Candy, and Tina Burner's dress was a standout as far as when you stood behind that backdrop, it didn't blend in. But y'all know I'm not the fashion person, so whatever. Um, Utica was being very campy. Like the purpose was to stand against the, the wallpaper, to see if you stood out. Utica did this whole thing where she was stumbling around the room and was very, she camped it up a whole lot. And I like Utica, y'all, but I, we'll get to, we'll, 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 um, we'll, um, talk more about it before, by the time we get to the end. But Utica's turning it into being more like a, a one trick pony kind of thing, like the whole camp thing. I, I like you, Utica, but I'm gonna need you to do something else. All right. Um, oh, you know, um, Rue did this whole Charles Nelson Riley bit, 
And of course, none of the queens got it. And I'm thinking to myself, <sighs> because even this, the the maxi challenge, I, I'll get there. Let me I, 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 let me get to the maxi challenge. Okay, so the maxi challenge we got into. It was they're doing a disco documentary. And so each group has to represent a different era of disco. So Elliot and Tanisha are representing disco and sex, which, baby. Got Mick, Candy, Tina Burner, they were um, representing... Oh, did I not write down what they did? They were like the beginning of disco, though, because they, they, they went first. So they were like at the beginning of disco, the birth of disco or whatever. Uh, Simone and Lala Reed did Disco Sucks. Rose Denali did the, the, the fashion of disco, and Olivia and Utica were doing Studio 54. Now, as someone who absolutely, positively loves disco, I was very disheartened to find that these hoes ain't know nothing about disco. Like, Rue had to give a whole history lesson on the Disco Sucks piece. Like how, you know, the, the DJ up in Chicago had everybody bring their disco albums down to burn them and they blew them up and this, this, and this, and this, this, and that. And I was just like, as someone who loves disco and has, like, wish I could go on a time machine and go to Studio 54 and probably has as much disco in my music collection as I have hip-hop, like, I was so disheartened. Now, is the production... Just so that Rue could tell the whole disco story. Um, Lala Ree was like, the only thing she know about disco is Sylvester. And at least she knew who the fuck Sylvester was. And could give Sylvester his props. Because. I'm just saying. You can't tell me who Sylvester is. And me and you might not be able to be friends. I don't know, y'all. This isn't the first time. Like, this season, it just seems like, again, are we dealing with clueless people? Or... Is the age difference really that big now? Like, it was just very disheartening to me that these ladies ain't no shit about disco. Maybe it's me. Anyway. Um, so the ladies have to go for their um, choreography because they, of course, they turn it into a whole, a whole thing where the ladies had you know, parts of the of it that they, they did together, and then they had parts of the choreography that they did individually with this, with just their partners. Um, and of course, they had the, you know, they had the clothing, and they had the hair, and they, you know, they were supposed to be embodying all that is disco. Now, I'm gonna say this. I think overall, I think overall, um, the, the production was nice. Again, I love disco, so I was I was here for it. I think overall the production was nice. There were a few hits, a few ins and outs. First of all, we found out. Now we already knew that Tanisha Iman was battling, um, had just battled cancer, and like literally six months ago she couldn't walk, much less dance and perform and do all the things that we know drag queens do. But what we did not realize until this episode was that she was also wearing a color a coloscopy bag. And she said that she literally has an open wound on her stomach. Now, didn't know that. That would explain a lot. As far as her limited mobility, as far as the type of garments that she's been choosing. Don't get me wrong, her her outfits have still been looking really nice. Uh, other than last week, I was here for all her outfits, you know. But that explains a lot. Even when it comes to the dancing and her limited mobility. And what I can appreciate is... She never mentioned it until this week. And I really feel like her mentioning it now was them going back and editing and putting in her interviews and splicing that in. Um, because she was talking about when they were doing the choreography, how she was sort of in her head. Because yes, she's a dancer and yes, she can dance. But again, dancing with the colonoscopy bag, when you could, I mean, I said colonoscopy, a coloscopy bag, when you literally couldn't even walk six months ago. Like, I just think that's a lot. This is what I'm going to say about what, about Tanisha Iman. I respect the fuck out of Tanisha Iman. And I hope somebody tells her I said it. I hope, I do. And I know that 
her coming back was proving I can do this. But I wonder if she might have been better served waiting one more year. You know what I'm saying? But don't get me wrong, mama, I was here for you, okay? But anyway, let's keep going, let's keep going. The other thing was, um, once again, I was underwhelmed with Candy Burner's outfit. I mean, she had on a red pantsuit. I mean, a, a red jumpsuit. And it was a red jumpsuit that really could... Disco had a flavor to it. A flavor all its own. It had a style of dress, a style of hair, a style of makeup. I mean, most eras do. And disco is, you know, much like a mod dress in the 1960s and things like that. You should be able to look at an outfit and say... Oh, somebody at Studio 54 would have worn that. And the, the jumpsuit that she had on was a jumpsuit that anybody could wear on any given day, anywhere. There was nothing spectacular or special about it. Tina Burner, on the other hand, looked like she had on a dress that was straight out of solid gold. Right? It had the fringes. It was a very Tina Turner-esque rolling on the river type dress. I mean... Olivia had the big curly fro. Um, like, there were people who were on that stage that you could say, yes, that right there, that was at Studio 54, or it was a really good imitation. Um, Utica, the same way. Utica wasn't giving me nothing. Um, and that's what I was saying about there's a time to be campy and there's a time to just let it flow. And Utica, you, I get it that you are who you are. But everything isn't a quirky moment. Everything isn't let me fall across the stage and make weird faces and do my my body in the most awkward moves. Like, this was a moment for you to get up there, do the choreography the way you were taught, dance your ass off the, to the best of your ability. Like, we know you're not no dancer, girl. But dance your ass off to the best of your ability and then leave your quirk for the runway. But... It was very distracting when Utica was doing her thing because it was like you're trying so hard to be so different, and it was just it was just distracting for me. Um, some of the other standouts, um, I thought La La Ree did really well. I thought she did really really well. Um, Elliot, of course, because we know Elliot can dance. Elliot did really well. Um, a few people were off with their choreography. The first group. Candy got Mick and Tina Burner. It took them a minute to get it together, but they went first. They had some nerves. Um, the fact that they're even calling themselves the Mean Girls, just, anyway. Um, but I told y'all to watch out for that click two episodes ago. Did I not? Um, then, you know, Tam Tamisha definitely was in her head. So you could see that she was a little slow on a little, little, bit, of, a little bit of her two count. Um, but yeah, all right. So now, the workroom scenes. Y'all know they always got to give us a little something-something in the workroom. So first we have Olivia letting us know that she was once a, was fat. She said she was almost 300 pounds at one time. And, you know, basically she talked about that it was her mom who sort of, you know, the doctor said, hey, your child is obese. And her mother was like, uh-uh, and put the clack-clack down and, you know, diet and exercise. She said theater was really her saving grace, that finding theater – um, and the performing arts was really very helpful to uh, her phys getting physically fit and getting back where she needed to be physically and all of that. Um, um, what's her name? We found out Tanisha Iman talked about growing up in the projects and how there was a woman in the projects that started a cheerleading squad and that helped her because, you know, she got into cheerleading and, you know, she said they found out that she could do backflips and stuff. And so, you know, until so her grandmother was like, uh-uh, that's gay. We don't do that around here. You know, you know. Then we, we, we found a little bit more about Candy Burner's story. Um, she grew up rough. You know, she said she had family members in jail. I want to say she said it was one of her parents. Um, you know, didn't have a lot of money. Um, you know, she said she was a fighter. She was out there in them streets. Now, I don't know how much of a fighter you were. But she said she's come a long way and she's better than she was. And that's why what happened in Untucked really upset her because it sort of took her back to where she wasn't, you know. Um, so that was the workroom conversation. Okay, so let's get into...
let's get into this. The, 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 um, the runway was Little Black Dress. Black dress. I would have wished there would have been a better runway coming up off of Disco. I just feel like there was a better runway that we could have got coming up off of Disco. Um, call me what you want. Call me crazy. But whatever. So we start off with Tina Burner. Tina Burner had on a black dress. And of course she had her signature red and yellow. But she had like the hands that covered the breast. And then at the bottom it had like the red and yellow like drip on it. It was a cute twist. It was cute. Um... But I agree with Michelle. The wig could have given me more. Yeah, you know. Candy Muse had this white canvas with like the black. It looked like um, like the paper, the paper doll thing. Um, we've seen it before, but I think that was probably her best runway look. And that ain't saying much, but it was. I did like the makeup. I didn't get the makeup. She had like black marker on her arms and face. I didn't, I mean, I don't think it was marker, but that's what it looked like it was supposed to be. I didn't get that. I wasn't quite sure what she was doing with that. Um, but that was a cute twist on the little black dress, you know. Got Mick, listen, I didn't like it at all. Got Mick was naked. All she had on was a little, like, dress cut out in the front and a little bow in the back, and she had little uh, decorations over her nipples. I did not like it. I did not like it at all. I thought it was, I just thought it was in poor taste. I didn't like it. I didn't see nothing cute about it. But that's just me. I don't, listen, I didn't like it. I, I just, I just didn't like it. Elliot had a black dress with a cape. Again, nothing spectacular, but it was cute because it had a cape and it had like, a, like the inside was gold, but it wasn't like that bold gold. It was like a gold lame. But it was cute. Um, Tamisha Iman had a black dress. I wrote classic. Again, looked like something that Dominique Devereaux could wear. Her makeup was a lot better than it was for me last week. The, she had on a black wig. I, you know, again, I just... Coming up off of disco, I just didn't think this was the best runway, but call me crazy. Um, Olivia, in my mind, had on like a club dress, but the hair was everything. That wig she had on, baby, was everything. It was like this huge auburn, like, it was beautiful. But the dress was, it was a black dress with like little like gold like things on it. Something that you would see somebody wear to the club, I feel like. Utica had this, gold, this dress, you know, black dress with like the gold paint and her shoulders. She had on this gold and then her hat had a hook on it. And come to find out, she was dressed as her earrings. Again, can't be different, weird. But like Carson said, something we should get. Well, I think Lonnie said it. Something that we should get off the break. Like, you shouldn't have to get that much explanation for us to understand what the hell you were doing. You know, but I again, I still like Utica. I just don't think it was a good week for her. I, I just don't. It wasn't a good week for her. Denali, um, she had a black, her black dress and it had like spider webs on it. It was, I liked it, because the back was like a back out, but it had like a spider web, and then on the front it had spider webs. I thought it was cute. I, 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 like, I liked her little twist on it. Rosé's dress, I did not like at all. It was a black dress with gray tulle all around it, coming out of the shoulders, going all the way down the side. I, I did not I did not like it at all. I didn't think it was cute at, at all. I don't know what was going on with that. La La Rie had a freakum dress on. That's all I can say about that. I mean, literally, she couldn't even walk the runway. It was running up. You could, by the time she got to the back of the runway, you could see her draws. Like, and she tried to pull it down a couple of times, and at a certain point, I think she just was like, you know, fuck it, I'm just gonna walk. So, not my favorite. Um, I mean, I can say not my favorite. I mean, if that's what you was given, if that was your purpose to say, I'm gonna wear me a freakum dress, then you did, you did your job. It was a freakum dress. Simone, um, oh, I can't read my own. Oh, she had a fringe dress, and it was hair. It was hair. So, the top, um, we had Olivia, Elliot, and, uh, Tina Burner were in the top. The bottom was Utica, Candy, and Tamisha. Olivia won, which she deserved it. Olivia deserved it. Utica, Candy, and Tamisha were in the bottom. 
I immediately knew we were going to get a Tamisha Candy lip sync. Do I think it should have been a Tamisha Candy lip sync? Maybe. I mean, Tamisha has been in the bottom consistently. I think she was safe one week and the other two weeks she was in the bottom. Um, Candy's runway looks have been unimpressive across the board. It was unimpressive again this week. So even though she's gotten great marks on the maxi challenge, her runway has done nothing to impress the judges. So has and Utica has either been in the top or been safe every week. So well, other than the week that she was the pork chop week. Um so I honestly do I think there was some production razzle dazzle in this? Yeah, yeah, it was. But was it ridiculous? No. Like this wasn't one of those where I'd be like, oh they obviously da 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 da. Um so it came down to Samisha and Candy, and the, the song was Hit em Up Style by Blue Cantrell. Let me say this. A healthy Tamisha Iman kicks Candy's ass. Because Candy's lip sync was not that remarkable. It, it just wasn't. It was very emotional because she was literally crying. And I'm, you know, I'm sure it was the emotions of being sent home. So she was literally in tears. So I think that there was something to that. But her lip sync was not that... And I don't think Tamisha's lip sync was bad. It was very classic. She ain't do no whole lot of getting around on the stage and rolling around. She gave you a straight up drag lip sync without the theatrics of RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, if you went and saw that performance at a club, you would be satisfied. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? But a healthy Tamisha Iman? But ultimately, Tamisha was in the bottom, and Candy, Shantae, you stay. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I will say that it looked like on her way out, Tamisha and Candy, they did hug, and I think it was genuine. And Tamisha told her, no tea, no shade. Like, it was what it was. And she said, you know, our competitions weren't meant to win. You were meant to be a part of it, to get something out of it for it to be a reason. You weren't meant to win all of your competitions. And, you know, I see you at All Stars. So it's time for me to go home and get ready for that. Because when, the, when they call me, I'm coming. I hope that she gets called to come back next season. I mean, All Stars is great. But I would like to see her come back and compete healthy. I would love to see a healthy Tamisha Iman com compete. Honestly. But anyway... Y'all let me know what y'all think. It was what it was. I'll talk to y'all later.